Hey friends, this reflection is for the first Sunday of Lent. I've always been fascinated by the movie Patton. And in the opening scene of that movie, George Scott, who portrayed the, the subject of the biopic, is seen with the American flag behind him. And first couple minutes in the movie, He's basically given what's called a monologue, which is basically the character giving a long speech. And in that speech, he talks about the greatness of America and that failure is not an option. You know, at the time, of course, we have World War II happening and the United States was dragged into it thanks to Pearl Harbor. And of course, they were about, they were fighting two fronts, one in Europe and, of course, one in the Pacific. For George Patton, who has saw combat since war, since the raids in Texas from the Mexican bandits, and also was a brilliant leader that has modernized military, you know, first time prospectively, he know what it takes to win. He know what it means to put together a winning team. And him at the helm. And in time, his strategy did work. As he would conquer the Nazis. And of course, eventually force the Italians to surrender to the Allies. And of course, you know, kind of like split the, the Nazis into two after invading Italy. Before going through North Africa and eventually working away up the Mediterranean. The point of my analogy is to give you an idea that you may not realize this, but we're in the midst of a spiritual warfare. We are at war. But this war is not about, you know, dropping bombs or storming a beach, getting on a helicopter and flying into danger, shooting down enemy planes. That's not what I'm talking about here. If you if you insist on seeing more of that, then I suggest you play Call of Duty. I digress. But seriously, when we look at the Gospel of Mark, it begins with Je when they talk about Jesus being in the desert for 40 days. Now, Lent does go for 40, roughly six to seven weeks. In those six to seven weeks, you're thinking about something that you want to give up. But at the same time, there's something else to it. That is, it's more than just giving up chocolate. It is more than just giving up this. I always had a professor that once told me, if you're going to give up something, add something. I thought that word of advice will pay off eventually. And that advice also will pay off for us. You see, every Christian is a common enemy. For Great Britain, the United States, and France, and other countries, their enemy was Hitler. Every Christian, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, well, Protestants, if you're listening to this, why don't you come up, why don't you come over to the Catholic side? The point is we all have a common enemy. And that is Satan. You see, friends, Satan does not want you succeed. Think about the people that talk you down. Think about the people that tell you you're not good enough. That's from the devil. You know, as you go through these 40 days, especially with Lent in full swing, the devil is going to be in detail. Everything you do. The reason why is he wants you to be him. 
He wants you to follow him. And he gives you all these empty promises. But here's the good news. Jesus. Care shines through us and in us. He perfects the promise that he made in the flesh of his own son. In those 40 days, friends, Jesus stood tall. He overcame three temptations. He overcame the power of Satan. We can too. In our spiritual journey, there are obstacles in our way. There are things the devil is trying to put in our way to get closer to God that we need to overcome. Some of us are probably giving up, you know, this, giving up that. But what do you plan to add to it? For me, I heard of someone, I had a thing where I asked people, well, what are you going to give up? Some are saying this. I'm like, okay, that's great. But what are you going to add to it? If you're giving up, you know, gossip or whatever, all right, well, why don't you start complimenting people? You know, saying, hey, I think you did a great job on that thing right there. Like, hey, I love that, that, that sweater. It looks awesome. You know, things like that. Another example could be, Another example could be, you know, maybe you're addicted to music videos on YouTube. Maybe you want to think about listening to praise and worship or like Christian music in its place. You need to put a little more of God in your life. That's the point of Lent. You need to have God more present in your life. For Jesus, he did just that. He showed us that we can overcome the power of Satan. It is clear, too, in the book of Genesis that Noah, even though he was on an ark for 40 days, God made a promise to him he wasn't going to do it. God's promise resonates in us now. So, friends, you are about to embark on a spiritual crusade. Hope in prayer of your those of your brothers and sisters in Christ everywhere march with you you must be courageous you must not be afraid you must never compromise you must stand tall because as we are reminded in the letter to saint peter i quote Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. The point of Lent is to suffer, to grow closer to him. How do you plan to grow closer to him as we embark on this Lenten journey? If you do take something out that is problematic in your journey, add something to it. Pray the rosary. Go to adoration more. Go to confession. Listen to praise and worship. Subscribe to the Magnifica. Or read the spiritual book. Read the Bible. Whatever. Add spiritual things when you give up secular things in, in this, on this journey. I can promise you the obstacles are going to fall. The devil's voice is going to get like, it's going to get lower and lower and lower. But God's voice, it's going to get higher. You will hear it, even in a, in a quiet room. The, the time, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, friends. It is also the time of fulfillment. Are you ready to go closer to Christ? The time to do that is now. Repent and believe.